So this is an introduction to the idea of shadow, the unconscious, and how the unconscious is the body. So in the body, uh, we carry around our history. Um, not in an abstract sense, a very real sense of how we hold ourselves, how we structure ourselves now. Now is then in the body, particularly our emotional history. If we had certain emotional learning, not just cognitive learning, but a certain way of being, we learned, for example, that the best way to be safe was to make ourselves small or equally to make ourselves big. That's in the body. Neuroscientists would call this something like implicit learning. With shadow, we're particularly looking at what's repressed and denied. So the parts of ourselves we don't want to see, and again, this is held normally in tension patterns, sometimes in patterns of collapse or patterns of movement within the body. So what does this matter? Well, what you don't know, what you don't um, own can hurt you. Um, specifically, it creates blind spots, things we don't see because we don't want to see. We're sort of turning away from that aspect of ourself. And when we see someone else with that, you usually get very triggered. So one, you know, one way of finding out what might be in shadow for you is who triggers you more than other people? So there might be that person at the office that say, I don't know, a bit lazy. Yeah, you have that judgment about them. And everyone gets a little bit annoyed by it, but you get really annoyed by it. Maybe you work so hard, you know, you're much more on the kind of overwork spectrum, you know? And equally, it's probably gonna be going back the other way. This can lead to a lot of conflict, a lot of projection, and, and just blind spots in ourselves, yeah? Another example, one that I've suffered from, and other, a lot of people in the corporate world I work with, is maybe denying the part of them that's weak and vulnerable because they need to be strong in their work and they've learned that in their lives. That can lead, for example, to people burning out because they're not acknowledging that that really is a part of them. Equally, it can lead to a lack of compassion for when people say have an illness and they do have a weakness, you know, we're human, that happens. You know, what we can't accept in ourselves, you find unbearable in other people too. So there's lots of forms of embodied practice that involve working through the body with shadow, therefore creating more freedom as a result. Um, things like lots of free form kinds of dance, like five rhythms, um, authentic movement, and also ones where you're kind of deeply in touch with the body itself, such as focusing, Paul Linden's following the body technique. Um, there's a whole bunch of them. The unconscious in the body really impacts on intuition and creativity as well. So where do we talk about gut instinct, yeah? That's our unconscious telling us through the body, and if we're aware of our body, we'll actually get the message, yeah? What, what needs to happen, what's safe, what's not safe, you know, our direction in life, the relationships to form, that intuitive gut sense. Similarly, creativity, yeah? Where do creative ideas come from? Again, through the unconscious in the body, being in touch with the body means you're in touch with the unconscious, creativity flows much more freely. So shadow is normally about what triggers us in the world or we have an overreaction to. Uh, it's also worth noting something called golden shadow, which is where we, um, something we're particularly drawn to. You often see this in the start of relationships, like the kind of idealizing or the kind of, wow, you're so amazing, I could never do that. that and then that flips to the other kind of shadow later in the relationship. So um, it can also be around what you idealize in the world, what you're very drawn to as well as what repulses you.